I've had the opportunity to test hundreds of ergonomic chairs for thousands of hours over the past decade. In that time, there's only been three chairs that I've given the coveted S tier ranking, which basically just means the best of the best, and two of those chairs we are going to take a look at today, the Steelcase Leap and the Hayworth Fern. For me, it doesn't get any better than these two chairs, but that might not be the case for you, and there's actually one aspect about each of these chairs that I would not recommend getting. If you're looking to fast track your chair search, check out our chair comfort cheat sheet in the description. Looking at both chairs, I think most people will agree that the Fern is the more modern, eye-catching design as compared to the Leap. The Fern came out much more recently than the Leap, so this isn't a surprise. It's not that the Leap looks bad, but the original Leap came out about 25 years ago and was then revamped in 2006-2007. From an aesthetic standpoint, it may be a bit lacking, but don't let that fool you when it comes to the overall build quality and longevity of this chair. Leap chairs have a reputation for lasting well past their warranty, and we see this firsthand on the used market all the time. The Fern doesn't have the history for us to know how long it will do long term, but this is Hayworth's new flagship chair, and their prior flagship, the Zodi, also does very well on that used market with good longevity. Both chairs are going to be top tier when it comes to build, ergonomics, and that longevity, whether it's the Fern or the Leap. For many like me, having a comfortable seat is crucial for a good ergonomic chair. I like seats that are firm, flexible, and don't have any hard edges. The Leap and Fern both do a good job here. The Fern has a thicker pad, but it's denser. It felt overly firm for me at first, but after about 60 days in mine, it softened up and I think it's really comfortable now. The Fern seat has a bit of flexibility to it, but nowhere near the Leaps. The flexibility in the seat is top tier on the Leap chair. The seat bends and moves a ton, so it really allows you to move your legs freely, and it never feels like you are restricted. I think the biggest complaint with the Leap is that it can feel a bit too firm. I think this is a common sentiment amongst most high-end chairs, simply because that's how you properly design a seat to be ergonomic, but thicker cushions are not going to be good for long-term health as compared to a firm cushion. The Fern may be a bit better here, just because the seat is a bit thicker, so it doesn't have that characteristic where it could bottom out like the Leap chair sometimes can. The biggest drawback to the Fern is going to be for tall people. When you extend the seat all the way out with the seat depth adjustment, there's a considerable gap between the backrest and the seat, and some taller individuals find this to be uncomfortable. The arms on both chairs are very similar in terms of adjustments and comfort. I would consider both of these chairs to have S-tier arms. From an adjustability standpoint, both are top-notch. They each have four-way adjustability with an extra articulating motion. Along with the high number of adjustments, the ranges are also amazing on each of them on both chairs. This is a big deal because many chairs have four-way adjustment, but the ranges are so limited that it simply doesn't matter. The Fern and Leap have arms that go super low, really high, narrow, wide, all of the things. These really are among the best arms to accommodate the widest range of people and the most working styles. Along with their ridiculous adjustability, both chairs also have comfortable arm pads. This is one area where I do prefer the Leap's flatter design as compared to the more rounded Fern pads, and I also like that the Leap's pads are a bit squishy and soft as compared to the Fern's. The Fern pads are still great, don't get me wrong. They're just not quite as soft and squishy as those Leap arms, which gives them the edge for me. It may be hard to top the arms on these chairs, but truthfully, it's the backrests on both models that really separate themselves from almost every other chair on the market. These are without question the two most comfortable backrests I have ever used. For me, they check all the boxes. The Leap's back is built with a flexible plastic shell. The shell is designed to bend and flex to adapt to your back. It is very unique in that it holds you in place very well, while also being flexible enough to give you a great range of movement to not feel locked into one position. The Fern has this same characteristic, but it does it completely different. Instead of a thin plastic shell, the Fern has a four-layer system that was designed to provide you with support, flexibility, and almost a suspended feeling. The Fern also has a thinner back design, and it's a bit taller than the Leap as well. The thinner design allows for more stretching and moving, but the Leap's design does make it feel like you're leaning against more chair, which some people will prefer. Maybe the biggest difference is going to be the lumbar systems. For me, the Leap has the better system just because you have so much more control over it. The Fern's lumbar is good. It's an airbag, so it doesn't feel pokey or plastically, but it's just 
only height adjustable and it's too pronounced for me. I prefer to use the fern without the lumbar addition because the shape of the back is excellent and I think it provides enough support. The Leap's lumbar system is also height adjustable like the fern, but you can control the depth of the lumbar too, which makes a big difference, especially with how much you can change the support level on the Leap. You can have very little support and even remove the lumbar support altogether, or you can really crank it up and have even more support than the fern offers. For being S-tier chairs, the Fern and Leap may be competing for the worst headrests on the high-end chair market. Both are pretty terrible. The Fern's headrest just doesn't provide anything extra for the chair in my opinion. It only has height adjustment, and because of its placement in front of the backrest, it is always there, but not in a good way. If it was positioned even with the backrest, I would like it a bit better because then it would be there for reclining and out of the way when tasking. The other reason why I think it's terrible is because of how hard it is. There is very little padding and almost no give to the headrest. It's just not comfortable to put my head on. The Leap is a similar story with the height adjustable only design. Steelcase decided to put it in line with the backrest, kind of. It's angled so far forward that this is another headrest that will force you to use it even when you simply do not want to use it. I think it's also uncomfortable. The padding is thin enough to feel the two bolts in the headrest, and for the price that Steelcase charges for this thing, you should be getting something top notch, not something that feels as cheaply made and as uncomfortable as this. I would save the money and steer clear of both headrests, but if you do want a chair with a headrest, I would go with a completely different model and avoid third-party additions. I would just go for something like the Steelcase Gesture instead. I know I said earlier that I thought the backrest may be where these chairs differ the most, but the recline is also in that conversation. I think both chairs are amazing at what they do, but they offer a different experience. The Fern has a traditional synchro tilt mechanism, but I especially like the Ferns because of how deep it is and because you get a tilt limiter function instead of the classic tilt lock. The fern feels super smooth to rock in and be in constant motion for a while. The deep recline also makes this a nice option for a more relaxing environment instead of heavy tasking all the time. The fern has the option to add a seat tilt, which allows you to tilt the seat forward and be in a more upright posture. Personally, I don't like this position, but it's something that the Leap cannot do, so if you need this adjustment, then the fern's going to be your go-to here. The Leap also has a great recline, but it's more focused on tasking and being in a static position as compared to the dynamic positions that the Fern can offer. The Leap has a synchro tilt recline as well, and it also has a tilt limiter like the Fern, but it's unique in that the seat slides forward as the back reclines. This keeps your hips open and keeps you in an ergonomic posture through the entire recline. This is great for changing your position while tasking to not be in the same spot for too long, but it won't have the bouncy, rocking feeling like chairs like the Fern offer. The range is really good, so you can still kick back and relax. I just think the Fern does a better job here in that specific application. For me, the Steelcase Leap and the Hayworth Fern are as good as it gets on the ergonomic chair market. But if my two S-tier picks don't check all of your boxes, check out our chair comfort cheat sheet in the description below.